Well, we all know that SpongeBob is popular with the kids, and for the life of me, I still keep trying to figure out I'm why with you. it is. I'm with you. I don't because a SpongeBob is talking a lot about global warming, and he's only looking at it from one point of view. Clearly, Nickelodeon is pushing a global warming agenda. And the SpongeBob book says that it's a man made problem that requires human intervention. Right. So we're forcing an issue that is not yet proven. We can't even teach our kids the adequate math, reading, and science at this point. So, what did you? Yep, you heard it here, folks. Nickelodeon is attempting to spread global warming propaganda to the masses. The makers of SpongeBob have set out to indoctrinate and brainwash the youth and fill their brains with nothing but false hope and empty promises. You heard it directly from this guy. Global warming is 100% a natural phenomenon and has absolutely nothing to do with humanity whatsoever. And if you hear it on Fox News, then it must be true, am I right? Now, what exactly did Mr. Bob do that sent these weirdos into shambles? Endless Summer was an educational short produced by Nickelodeon in 2005. It features Mr. Krabs pumping an ungodly amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere in an attempt to create an endless summer. This would allow him to open his new venture, what he likes to call the Krusty Pool, so he can charge for year-round swimming for people to cool off from the hot summer heat. SpongeBob, being the loyal employee that he is, sets out to help Mr. Krabs in his endeavors. Unfortunately, SpongeBob puts in a little too much effort and causes the temperature to increase way, way higher than Mr. Krabs is intended. Instead of trying to cool off by taking a swim in the crusty pool, the inhabitants of Bikini Bottom are forced to move north because they can no longer survive in the current climate. And then at the end, we see Mr. Krabs wallow in a self-pity. Now, I think it's pretty clear why this could potentially cause uproar with people who have no idea what they're talking about. It's basically showing that global warming is man-made and that carbon dioxide emissions from humans are the main cause of global warming. In my honest opinion, I think people are just being a bunch of babies because it wasn't even that bad. But this isn't the first time that SpongeBob has associated itself with pollution. And this is where the theory comes in. Everybody knows about the Bikini Atoll theory. Basically, the CIA did testing of nuclear bombs in the middle of the ocean, and people believe that the radiation of those nuclear tests caused the mutations of the under-the-sea creatures, thus creating the inhabitants of Bikini Bottom. But this pollution theory goes way, way, way back to the olden times. I'm talking like five or six years ago. Basically, this theory states that oceanic pollution is represented by the characters of SpongeBob. Don't believe me? Well, you should, because I put a lot of energy into this. Also, there's this. <laughs> There's that. But anyways, back to the theory. SpongeBob is pollution. SpongeBob is a sponge. Duh. I am a man. But did you realize that SpongeBob isn't a normal sea sponge? A normal sea sponge is round and tan, kind of like me. But SpongeBob is square and yellow. That's because SpongeBob is a kitchen sponge. Don't believe me again? Look at this. Mr. Krabs is corporations. In the show, we all know Mr. Krabs as SpongeBob's money-hungry and greedy boss. And Mr. Krabs supposedly represents the large corporations that are responsible for a lot of the pollution and environmental harm. Mr. Krabs loves the fact that SpongeBob works for him because SpongeBob brings in a lot of income and makes Mr. Krabs a lot of money. This basically represents that the greedy corporations don't actually care about the pollution that they are producing as long as they are bringing in a generous income. And honestly, with what we know about Mr. Krabs as a character and as a person, this one isn't that too hard to believe. Patrick is Western civilization. Patrick is fat, stupid, lives under a rock, and is completely oblivious to everything going on around him. Kind of like a lot of climate deniers. Squidward is liberalism. Squidward is into the arts, music, 
culture, and science, but most of the time his interests go constantly ignored by his friends and his neighbors. Because literally not one single person cares about anything that Squidward ever does, he is forced to work for Mr. Krabs at the Krusty Krab and succumb to the evils of capitalism. This is supposedly supposed to represent the liberal arts and sciences that are constantly being ignored to make change in the real world. These people are often seen as the ones who are against the corporations and their environmental destruction and ignorance, but are still forced to become victims of the capitalist regime. Sandy is Texas. No, like Sandy is literally the spiritual embodiment of all of Texas. She's not just from Texas. She is Texas. Yeah, we all know Sandy is super smart and is into super high-tech geeky science stuff, but Sandy also has an unusual obsession with pure violence and utter chaos. And she also lives in a certain way that is really only beneficial to just her. Hmm, sound familiar? <laughs> But yeah, that's basically it. That's the pollution theory. I just want to end off this video by stating this is not my theory that I came up with with my own brain power. I'm not smart enough to do that. This was posted on Reddit and I will leave the original thread in the description below. You guys saw the side effects of pollution and what it did to the inhabitants of Bikini Bottom. They were all forced to pack up their things and move to a whole new life. Oceanic pollution is actually a huge problem in real life as well and there are many ways that you guys can help out be sure you guys head over to teamseas.org where you guys can donate to help clean up plastic out of the ocean even though spongebob is a fictional show oceanic pollution is something that we are struggling with in real life and it is a problem that we really got to take care of as soon as possible 100 of the money raised by team seas will be donated directly to their non-profit partners that will help clean up the beaches oceans and rivers all across the world this is a really amazing thing that team seas is doing and if you can't donate at least try to share and spread the word and get this message out to as many people as you possibly can the goal is to raise 30 million dollars to remove 30 million pounds of trash from the oceans river and beaches so we need every single person to squat up to defeat this foe thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to visit teamseas.org and i'll see you guys in the next one